would tonight, take your Bibles and go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 1. 1 Kings, chapter number 1. As the Lord leads, we're working through the characters of the Old Testament. And tonight, we're going to be looking at the man Adonijah. Adonijah. I'll tell you who Adonijah is. Adonijah is one of the many sons of David, and he's actually the oldest person in line to be the next king of Israel. Absalom's dead. And now Adonijah is the next in line to be the king except for the fact that God has told David that Solomon is to be the next king. And this is something that Adonijah knew. This is something that Solomon knew. It's something that Bathsheba knew. It's something that David knew. But Adonijah, when we come to 1 Kings chapter number 1, his dad, King David, is very sick. And Adonijah takes it on himself to exalt himself to be the next king. Tonight's message is titled this, Adonijah exalted himself. And I just want you to know that's never good. The Bible says, let another man praise thee, not thine own mouth. And the Bible teaches us that that's not the way to go about getting what you want. And we're to let the Lord exalt us. We are to be humble. But the Bible says in regards to Adonijah, that Adonijah exalted himself. Let's look at this story together. Begin reading in verse number 1 of chapter 1. The Bible says in verse 1 of chapter 1 of the book of 1 Kings, Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servant said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they thought sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel and found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man. And his mother bare him after Absalom. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zerui, with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed Adonijah, following Adonijah, helped him. But Zadok, the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan, the prophet, and Shimei and Rei and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zohelath, which is by Enrogel, and called all his brethren, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and the mighty men and Solomon his brother he called not. So we have this passage of scripture, and here's what's happened. Mr. Adonijah, the Bible says in verse 5, exalteth himself, saying, I will be king. From verses number 11 through verse number 39, here's what happens. We'll go to our reading in just a moment, verse number 39. But what happens next, he exalts himself, he calls a group of men that he knows will follow him, that will say yes to him, and ignore the king, and ignore Solomon, and ignore the preacher, Nathan the prophet. And so they plan a feast, and he exalts himself, and makes himself, determines to make himself the king. And this group of men follow him, and Nathan the prophet gets wind of it. So Nathan comes to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and Bathsheba goes to David, the king, who is still in his right mind. He says, she says to David, do you want Adonijah to be the king? David's like, no, I want Solomon to be the king. Here in just a few minutes, here comes Nathan. Nathan says, do you want Adonijah to be the king? No, I want Solomon to be the king. So Bathsheba and Nathan say, look, if you want Solomon to be the king, you're going to have to anoint him to be the king because everybody's looking to you for answers. And Adonijah has raised up a group of people to be the next king. So here's what happens. The David gathers a group of his faithful people. 
they officially anoint Solomon to be the next king of Israel. And there is a great celebration going on in Jerusalem. About three quarters of a mile from where Adonijah has set up his own party, exalting himself to be the next king. So there's this great noise and there's great excitement in Jerusalem. And everybody at Adonijah's party is like, what in the world's going on? The Bible says in verse 39, And Zadok the priest took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. And Adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they had made an end of eating. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar? And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, the priest came, and Adonijah said unto him, Come in, for thou art a valiant man, and bring us good tidings. And Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, Verily our Lord King David hath made Solomon king. And the king hath sent with him Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king in Gihon, and they are come up from thence rejoicing, so that the city rang again. This is the noise that ye have heard. And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. And moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord, King David, saying, God make the name of Solomon better than thy name, and make his throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. And also thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which hath given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even seeing it. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid, and rose up, and went every man his way. Verse 50, And Adonijah feared because of Solomon, and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah feareth King Solomon. For lo, he hath caught hold on the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me today that he will not slay his servant with the sword. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not an hair of him fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and bowed himself to King Solomon. And Solomon said unto him, Go to thine house. If you would look back in our text tonight, verse 5. The Bible says, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalteth himself, saying, I will be king. What did he do? Adonijah exalted himself. That is a big no-no for God's people. The Bible says, and I love these Proverbs. You may just make notes of them. I'll read them to you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2, Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. When I read that and I think about the fact that Solomon most likely penned that, I can't help but wonder if Solomon had in the back of his mind, he's just become the king in our story. His brother Adonijah had been a, just an utter fool. And I wonder if he couldn't help but, I can't help but wonder if he was thinking as he penned that proverb, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips, if he didn't have Adonijah in the back of his mind. In Proverbs chapter number 25, these are Proverbs of Solomon. In Proverbs chapter number 25, verses 6 and 7, actually verse 5, the Bible says, take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Now he's thinking, there's no doubt as he's writing, I just believe he's thinking about Adonijah. The Bible says in verse number 6, Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. What's that mean? He says, don't, don't exalt yourself in the presence of the king. Don't speak up for yourself. Don't move to a higher place in your own thinking, in your own mind. He says, he says don't do that. Don't exalt yourself yourself. 
Solomon writes in his Proverbs, don't put yourself in your own opinion in the place of great men. Stay humble. Stay real. He says in verse 7, For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. This proverb, Solomon just says, Look, it's better for the king to notice you back in the back doing the servant's task or being humble and say, Come on up here, than it is for the king to see you're sitting at the head of the table and say, Hey, get away. He says, that's the spirit, that's the, that's the principle. Adonijah exalted himself. And may we not be guilty of that. May we not be guilty of that spirit because it doesn't work. First of all, this evening I want to tell you this about Adonijah. The way he acted. The way he acted. Here's the whole story. Adonijah, he wants to be the king. Now, you can't blame him for wanting to be the king. He's one of the sons of David, he's the oldest living son of David. God has said Solomon's going to be the king, but Adonijah wanted to be the king. So Adonijah, he, does, he goes about getting his own way. He exalts himself to be the next king. He tells, he gets a few people. He knows Joab is a, uh, is, has no character, so he calls on Joab. He calls on a few other people to come and kind of support him. And he says, let's just have a big party. I'm going to be the next king. David's sick. David's dying. I'll be the next king. So he makes this big plan, has this big party. He even plans the location of it. And they have this party. The only thing about this is he leaves out some very important people. He leaves out Nathan. He leaves out Benaiah, the mighty men. He leaves out Solomon. He leaves out David. He doesn't even consult with the king. He plans on being the king and doesn't even consult with the king. So he throws himself a big party. And while he's throwing himself a big party... Bathsheba has a meeting with David. Nathan has a meeting with David. And David calls for Solomon. And officially, he is anointed. Solomon is anointed the king of Israel. They're having a big party in Jerusalem. Three quarters of a mile away from where Adonijah is having his party. The noise of Jerusalem overpowers the noise of Adonijah party and Adonijah says to Jonathan the messenger hey what's going on I know you got good news for him. he's still reveling in his he's still got his chest pumped out you know hey I'm the next king I know you got good news for your new king and Jonathan's excited you can hear it you can see he goes and also and also he's telling the whole story Jonathan's like you won't believe what's going on Solomon's the new king can you just see the the color go out of uh Adonijah's face, <laughs> his jaw drops, got to wipe a little slobber, you know. Do what? John says, yeah, they've anointed him king. Solomon rode through town on David's donkey. And the whole town is blowing trumpets and piping pipes. And Man, it's exciting. We've got a new king. Adonijah, all of his friends, you know, all those people he had just snuck around and got to come and support him in his self-appointed kingship. Here's what they ha- what they did. They all like kind of get scared and they're like, "Hey, look, man, I gotta go. I'm out of here." They're gone. <laughs> they're gone. They disappear. And Adonijah's all by himself. The next picture, the next thing we see from Adonijah is he's holding on to the horns of the altar. I've been fascinated by why in the world Adonijah holds on to the horns of the altar. In just a few pages in this passage of Scripture, Joab does the same thing. There was coming a day where there would be cities of refuge, people who had sinned and, they were, and people who, had, who, who were guilty of manslaughter and that type of thing. There were places, city of refuges, where they could go and they were safe until they could have a trial. At this time, before the cities of refuge, if you got a hold of the horns of the altar... That was a place, it was like base. Have you ever played tag and you have base? And if you're on base, you can't, uh, you can't get in trouble, you can't get tagged. So that was like base. So he's holding on to the horns of the altar, scared out of his mind, because he has been an insurrectionist against Solomon. And he sends word to Solomon. He says, please don't kill me. Solomon sends him word. He says, look, if you'll act like a wise man, you'll live. You'll live. And Solomon gave him mercy. But you know what Adonijah did? 
Adonijah continued in his own foolish, self-centered yearning and desire and actions, seeking his own glory, exalting himself. In the next page, the next chapter, Adonijah, he still wants to get move on up in authority and power. So he's got his eyes fixed on somebody. David's dead now. And David had this fair young concubine, Abishag. She'd been brought in when David was really old to care for him. And so Adonijah goes to King Solomon. No. Yeah. Adonijah doesn't go to King Solomon and say, Hey, can I have dad's wife? That's weird, isn't it? He doesn't go to Solomon and say, can I have dad's wife? That sneaky, self-serving, self-exalting, good-for-nothing, dirty, rotten scoundrel, Adonijah, he goes in the back door. He has a meeting with Bathsheba, King Solomon's mother, and says, hey, will you talk to Solomon? I want Abishag. Bathsheba says, okay, I'll go ask. She goes and asks Solomon, and Solomon immediately, being a wise man, sees this guy is rotten to the core. And the end of Adonijah is he's put to death as an insurrectionist against the nation of Israel. The message tonight is titled this, Adonijah exalteth himself. Let's just start with this, number one, the way he acted. The way he acted. The first thing we see is in verse 5. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggath, exalteth himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. Now, he attempted to make himself king. Folks, it's not right to exalt yourself to any place of prominence. He says, I think I'll just be the king. I think I'll exalt myself. The way he acted was he cared more about him than he did every other person. Do you know the the essence of a true leader? A true leader is more concerned about how his actions affect others and the betterment of others than how his actions affect himself. He was taking an opportunity when there was a moment of tragedy David the king, the king after God's own heart, the king David, the psalmist of Israel, he was on his deathbed. And instead of being concerned about the future of Israel and the glory of God and the people, his people, all the thing that Adonijah could think about was, I think I'll exalt myself. The way he acted, he exalted himself, attempted to make himself king. Not only that, but he was spoiled. I like what the Bible says here in verse number 6. In regards and describing Adonijah, the Bible says his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? Do you know what that means? There was never a time when Adonijah got out of line that his daddy bust his tail. I think that's what the King James says, right? It's so funny to me to see this. But Adonijah was a spoiled brat. He was the brother of Absalom. I don't know if David was just uh, just was concerned about hurting his pride or what. He needed to strike him down a few notches. But the Bible says that he was a spoiled brat. He'd never been corrected. Not only had he never been corrected, but look what else was going for going on for Adonijah. The Bible says uh, his dad had never displeased him at any time, saying, Why hast thou done so? And he was also a very goodly man. And his mother bare him after Absalom. He was a very goodly man. He was a good-looking guy. All you single girls out there, you thought, woo. He was a good-looking man. But I want you to know something. Self-esteem and outward appearance and outward looks will only get you so far. Do you know what Absalom, the way he acted? Absalom was a spoiled, rotten brat that only cared about himself. It's the way he acted. It continues. He surrounded himself with people who would stroke his ego. In verse number 7, the Bible says he conferred with Joab. Do you remember Joab? If you looked at Joab through this passage of Scripture, all through the books, the book of First and Second Samuel, Joab over and over again, he's a dirty, rotten dog. Joab just tends to whatever is most expedient for Joab. Joab's not loyal. Joab is 
he is swamp material if there ever was any. Old Joab, he's a rotten politician. And so guess who Mr. Adonijah calls to his aid? None other than Joab, the son of Zeruiah, verse 7. And Abiathar, the priest, he hired himself a priest that would tell him what he wanted. And he, but he would not, in verse 9, he did not call Zadok the priest because Zadok had some character. He would not call Benaiah the son of Jehoiada because Benaiah was a man of great loyalty to the king. He would not, in verse number 8, call Nathan the prophet because Nathan was a godly man. And he called these people together that he knew would stroke his ego. Folks, I want you to know something. If you only seek counsel from people that you know will tell you yes, you're a fool. And you're going to fall into the same category as Adonijah. Look, it's easy to get people to tell you what you want to hear. But if you're wise, you'll find folks who are willing to oppose you if necessary. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. In the same chapter, I believe, chapter, I think Proverbs 27, I read to you just a few minutes, either 25 or 27, in, in sequence with these verses I've been reading you, is that verse of Scripture that I love to quote. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But you know what Adonijah did? He was a good-looking, spoiled, rotten brat that only cared about himself, and he surrounded him with people who would stroke his ego and tell him what he wanted to hear. That's not wise. That's not wise. I want to speak to our young people for just a minute. If your parents are kind enough to tell you when you're wrong, thank God for them. I want to talk to the adults. If you have family members who are kind enough to tell you when you're wrong, thank God for them. Young adults, if your family members are wise enough and kind enough to tell you when you're wrong, thank God for them. And don't just seek advice from places where you know you'll get a yes. Seek advice from folks who love you enough to tell you no if it's necessary. And be the kind of person who gives that kind of advice. But that's not what Adonijah looked for. Adonijah lived in this idea, this this sense that was not real. Because he surrounded himself with people that would tell him what he wanted to hear. And he disregarded opposing advice the way he acted the spoiled rotten brat he disregarded opposing advice he knew when he because he didn't invite nathan verse 10 you see what the bible says but nathan the prophet and benaiah and the mighty men and solomon his brother he called not he's planned his party but you know who he left out the first person left out was nathan nathan was a faithful preacher he loved god he Walked with God. He was used of God mightily all through the life and ministry of David. But Adonijah said, "Uh uh-uh, I ain't inviting him. Just so you know, if you're doing something, you can't invite the preacher, you probably shouldn't be doing it. You know what I mean? I remember I started preaching when I was just a kid. I was 15 years old when I started preaching. I really wanted to stand up for the Lord in high school. I made my mistakes, and there's people here who know me very well through that whole time. But I remember one of the first times I didn't get an invitation. And it broke my heart. But then the more I thought about it, the Lord encouraged me because the absence of that invitation was a testimony to what God was doing in my heart. And if you're involved in something that you can't invite the preacher, then you probably ought not do it. You probably ought not do it. So they didn't invite Nathan. Then they didn't invite King David. If there's something you're doing that you can't do in the knowledge of your authorities, then you probably shouldn't do it. You see, David was king. He was the authority. He was was God's man and God's leader for the nation of Israel. And the people were to live in submission to his leadership. Yet his own son, Adonijah, the spoiled, rotten, good-looking brat that he was, when he made himself king, he didn't even talk to King David about it. If you can't invite the preacher, you probably shouldn't do it. If you can't 
do it with the king, with your authorities, you probably shouldn't do it. He didn't invite Benaiah. Benaiah is one of the most loyal men that we meet in this story, in this Bible. He's loyal to David and he becomes very loyal to King Solomon. If you can't do it with somebody that's loyal to the authority, you probably shouldn't do it. The mighty men, these were the men who were loyal also to King Solomon. They didn't invite them either. You know why? Because Adonijah, he disregarded opposing advice. And Adonijah was not interested in the truth or what was right. Adonijah was interested in what Adonijah could get out of a troubled situation. And he snuck around in order to try to get what he wanted. If you've got to sneak to do it, don't do it. Adonijah is very fool of Ad- foolish. And Adonijah exalteth himself. The way he acted. One last thing as we consider the way he acted. Look with me in chapter 2, verse 15. Adonijah, the dirty, rotten dog, has been forgiven by Solomon. And now he goes to Bathsheba because he wants to marry his dad's wife. That's terrible, isn't it? That sounds like the song, I Am My Own Grandpa. It's got, it's got problems, right? Adonijah wants to marry this woman. And he's speaking. He begins his conversation with Bathsheba. And he says in verse 15, he says, He said, Thou knowest that the kingdom was mine. You hear that? He's, he's, been, he's already held on to the altar. He's already been forgiven. Solomon's already the king. And that bonehead is still holding on to the fact. He said, nah, I had the kingdom. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He never had the kingdom. But he's exalting himself. He's speaking to Bashu. He says, Now thou knowest that the kingdom was mine. And that all Israel set their faces on me, that I should reign. Howbeit, the kingdom has turned about and has become my brother's, for it was from the Lord. Do you know what he knew? He did know that it was God's will for Solomon to be the king. And the way this man acted, he gave no regard to opposing advice, and he gave zero regard to God's will. Hey, look, we need to get to the place where we don't make any moves that, are, that we're not consulting God for his will. You need to know God's will for your life. We need to determine to know God's will for our life and do God's will for our life because God's will for our life is what's best. Nat and I just didn't learn his lesson. The way he acted leads, number two, to the way he ended. The way he ended. You know the story. Bathsheba had a meeting with David. Nathan had a meeting with David. David anoints Solomon to be the next king of Israel. David rides through Jerusalem on David's donkey. Israel celebrates. And Jonathan gives his report. You won't believe what happens to Adonijah. He tells Adonijah all the details. When all of Adonijah's so-called friends, his so-called friends, realized that he wasn't going to be the king anymore. Look what happens. The first, the way he ended, number one, he was abandoned by his friends. He was abandoned by his friends. The Bible says in verse 49 of chapter 1, and all the guests, how many? All the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid and rose up and went every man his way. Let's learn something from Adonijah. If you have friends that are there just to tell you yes, because you're on the rise, when you are a zero or a nothing, when you fall and fail and falter like we all do, those friends will not be friends at all. The way he ended, all his so-called friends left him. Do you know who you can count as your friends? The ones that will visit you in jail. That's a good, good idea. If you have a friend you know who would visit you in jail and would help you when you're in prison, that's a good friend. A good friend somebody who will be there for you when you have nothing to offer them. But Adonijah had fooled him on his own self as he exalted himself to a place he didn't need to be. And Adonijah, the way he ended, he was abandoned by his friends. Number two, he was given grace by Solomon. Solomon said, okay, I won't harm you. I won't hurt you. 
But Adonijah condemned himself with his sneaky, self-serving, self-exalting ways. Adonijah ruined his own life. He was given a chance. He had an opportunity. But you know what Adonijah did? Adonijah continued in his old wicked ways. He goes to Bathsheba and says, hey, talk to Solomon. Talk to Solomon. Solomon hears his request and because of his wicked heart and insurrection, Adonijah is put to death at an early age. It's a sad end, isn't it? That's what happens when you exalt yourself. That's what happens when you are determined to do things your own way and disregard God's will. That's what happened to Adonijah. Adonijah exalted himself. The Bible says, let another man praise thee. Not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. Adonijah exalted himself. Let's not be guilty of the same thing. It doesn't pay to be an Adonijah. May God teach us something from his word.